Welcome everyone. Welcome to our sixth class. Today we're going to be exploring um, the numbers from 10 to 20. Well, more like zero to 20. Um, as usual, we're going to start with our Kahoot. So let's get that going. Oh no. Right. Okay. Um, Gordon, we never really okay. Um I guess yeah, just try and try and pick out the answers. Okay. Sorry? Okay. Right, and uh, just a reminder, again, um, if you don't know how to get in, you go to uh, kahoot.it, okay, nice, nice. And then you type in this game pin right here, and then um, you type your name. Okay. Um, can you read it again? Because I was somewhere else doing a little sorry. Read the game pin? Sophia, do you mean the game pin or the instructions? I was using scissors to draw, using scissors to cut. Oh, okay. So you create a new tab, um, and then you. Tab. Yeah. How to create a new tab? Oh, okay. Um, are you on Google Chrome right now? Are you in Zoom? Like, uh, um. Okay. Sophia, I believe I showed you this. Um. The same thing last class as well, but um, I can show you again after class, okay? So um, is it okay if you just um, watch for, for today? Okay, and then um, I'll show you after class, okay? Okay, then I guess I'll start. Two. Ooh, nice job. Okay. Two. Oh, wait. Okay. Um, I guess. Okay. So, uh, if you weren't here last class, uh, I forgot who was here last class, but um, we went over ordinal numbers, which are um, numbers that tell you position. So, if um, say say we have a line right here of people. Um, imagine that um, these people um, are standing in the line. And so if we were to use ordinal numbers, this person will be first, this person will be second, And then this person will be third. Okay. And so the question was the asking, what was the ordinal number for one, um, which is first?
Right, and uh, I still added some addition and subtraction problems, so you guys don't forget. Uh, yeah, Sophia, what's up? Mm. Can I go to the restroom? Uh, sure. Nice job. Nice job, seven minus three, it's four. Okay. Okay. Ooh, nice job, whoever got it. Um, Ordinal numbers, uh, like I said, they show position. So they show where something is, right? Um, if we go back to our line example, we have three people. Um, when we use ordinal numbers, like say the person on the left is first, that's showing where they are. Uh, and it's not really showing um, how many or the amount. Okay, and um, here we just have another addition problem. Nice job. And nice job, okay. Four more questions. Okay, um, by this I mean, do they, are they used the same way? Are they used the same way? Do they have the same purpose? And normal numbers, yeah, okay, nice job. Uh, normal numbers are just, uh, zero through ten. Okay. Nice job. Um, Okay, um, well, okay, um, we have red, blue, and yellow, and so uh, if we were to use ordinal numbers, it would look like this. This would be first, this would be second, and this would be third. Sorry for my bad handwriting. And so that means the second one is blue. Um, good job to whoever got it. And it is not green because green is not um, one of the colors here. And it's not red because it's first. But yeah, red is first. Strong. Okay, last question.
Nice job. Um, again, ordinal numbers show position or where something is um, compared to just normal numbers um, that show how many. Okay. Good job, Angela. Good job, Mason. And good job, Elise. Okay. Now we will begin our lesson. Okay, so again, today we're gonna to be talking about numbers that go from um, 10 to 20 specifically. And um, so after 10, it goes like this. We have, we have 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15, okay? And you might see from here, um, because these numbers are all after 10, you can see that there's always this, um, this part here. And if you count all of them, well, you're going to find that there are 10 of them. So it's always, after 10, it's always 10 and then some other number, okay? And for 11, you have one more than 10. For 12, you have two more, two more than 10. Then um, so on. So 13, 3, 14, 4, 15, 5. So you can kind of tell how many there are over here. If you look at um, the very right of the number, you can tell how many more than 10 there are. Okay. So um, it says right here, 13 is 10 and three, right? So you have um, 10, um, I think they're eggs, and then three more than that. So that makes 13. Then after we have um, the exact same thing, we have 16, which means um, 10 and then six more, 17, 10 and seven more, 18, eight and, uh, or 10 and eight more, then 19, nine, uh, 10 and nine, nine more, and then 20, um, which is, I guess, a new term. And 20, you can see, is two tens combined together, okay? So you have a uh, 10 here, and then a 10 here. That's a bad drawing of a circle. <laughs> okay. Um, so actually, here. Who would like to try to count from um, 10 to, or yeah, 10 to 20? Yes, Gordon. Do I start with one? Uh, start with 10. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Nice. Okay. Uh, now we're going to move on to this exercise where um, you can see something like that. We're going to um, make these sentences. Okay. So who can tell me what number is 10 and 6 put together? Yes, Mason. 16. 16. Okay. Perfect. Plus six is 16. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Now we have uh, 10 mangoes and then um, well, five more. So what does that make? Yes, Gordon. 15. 15, perfect. Okay, and then I guess I'll just do the last one. We have 10 and then we add eight more. We're going to have 18. Okay. How many beads are there? Okay. So 10 and 15, first, if we count all of them, we're going to find that they make 15. Okay. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and then 15. Okay. Oh, wow. 
Okay, and so uh, 10 plus five, which is um, the same thing as uh, 10 and five, um, the answer is also 15. Okay, um, now if we have stamps, it is the exact same thing. Um, 10 and 14, we count uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 and 14. So 10 and four make 14. And so 10 plus four is also 14. Okay, uh, who wants to try making addition sentences? Now, instead of um, doing this first step, we're gonna try and jump to C right away. Okay. Uh, yeah, Ethan or Elise, I guess. Elise, oh, do you have your hand up? Yeah, go go ahead and try for a. How about this one? Fifteen. Fifteen, perfect. Okay. Um, and Gordon, don't try B. Yep. Ten plus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. It goes eighteen. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Now, who wants to try counting from twenty all the way to one? We've done that with ten to one, but does anyone want to try? Yes, yeah, Sophia. Go ahead. Sophia, did you want to give this a try? Okay. I forgot to unmute. Oh, okay. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty, ninety, and twenty. Oh, okay. That was a nice job. Um, it's just, I think from starting from 14 to 19, you started counting um, something that is similar, which is pretty cool. Um, actually, yeah. So for four, uh, 14, you said 40, um, which is uh, way over uh, 14 and also way over 20. 40, um, if you guys see, is actually four um, of ten, four tens put together, okay? 20 is only two, and then 10 is only one. So 40 is all the way um, up there. Same with 50, 60, 70, 80, and then 90, okay? But um, that was a really nice job. And uh, yes, Gordon, go ahead and try and count backwards. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, rest off. Perfect. I like, I like the little blast off you added there. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, now we're going to try and um, fill in the missing numbers, okay? So um, if the numbers are going from 0 to 20, um, we know... This will be 16 and this will be 20 because we know from 10 to 20, it goes um, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and then 17, 18, 19, and finally 20. So we know um, the number before 17 is 16 and the number after 19 is 20. 
same for uh, 9 to 13. If we count, we know that after 9, after 9, we will get 10. And after 10, we will get 11. So then it would go 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. Okay, who would like to try C? Yes, Mason. And uh, Angela, go ahead and try uh, annotating for D. 14, 13, 12. Perfect. Wow. And um, good job. Not getting tricked. I almost put um, I almost put 17, 18, and then 20. But good job. Okay. Nice job. Okay. This one is a little tricky, but uh, Angela still got it, which is amazing. If we see, um, if we look at uh, Ooh, just, twos. yeah, if we look at just the first two, you have two and four, and you see they skipped a number. Okay, they actually skipped three, yep. and you can see the same here. They skipped five, and then Angela put eight here, which means they skipped seven, and they skipped nine, two, eleven, eight, and thirteen. Six, seven, eight, nine, so. Um, you'll learn later, wait, Gordon, Gordon, let's sit yeah. down. Um, you'll learn later uh, that this is actually a pattern. These numbers have a special name to them, okay? And it is same with one, three, five, seven, nine, and so on. I know the name. <laughs> That's really cool, Gordon. But um, we're, we're gonna keep it a secret, okay? Until um, we get to that part. Okay, uh, who wants to try this one? It's kind of the same concept, but it is used differently. Okay, Gordon, go ahead. Should I choose D or E? Uh, e. Okay. Hmm. Does that say 11, Gordon? Next to no, the 13? 19. 19? Yep. Ooh, okay, you're close. Wait, and this one says 7, right? Yep. And this one's 9? Yep. Okay, so um, those two are um, actually correct, so great job. But for this one, um, do you mind sharing why you thought it was 19? I don't know. Oh, 11. Yeah, 11. Okay, and that is because, well, you can see, um, just like last time, we started um, skipping numbers, okay? So for this, we skipped 16, 14, 12, 10, 8, and 6. So um, that means we're always going to go by twos. You can see that uh, from 17 to 15, um, you are going by two. From 15 to 13, you're going by two. So from 13, you go by uh, two and you're going to get uh, 11. And then you're going to get nine, and then seven, and finally five. Okay? Okay. Good job. Okay. Which set has a greater number? Okay. If we look at A and we start counting the penguins, one, two, Three, four, five. So uh, A has five. But if we count B, we get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So you get eight. 
Now, the number that is greater is always the number that is higher or farther away uh, from zero, okay? So if we look at, say, for example, one and three, uh, three is farther away from zero. Three is three numbers away from zero, but one is only one away from zero. So we know that three is greater, okay? And so in this case, because we know eight is um, higher in number or farther away from zero, um, we know that B uh, is the bigger number. And so we know uh, B has the most or B has the greater number. Okay. Does anyone like to try uh, eight? Uh, yes, Elise. A. Yeah, perfect. Okay, A has four and B has eight. So A is smaller. Okay. Which set has the greatest number and which set has the smallest number? This time you guys might have to take your time because there are four instead of two. Uh, yes, Mason. Wait, Mason, you're you're muted. I think. C has the greatest number. Wait, sorry, can you repeat that? B has the greatest number. Okay. A has the smallest number. C has the smallest number. D has the greatest number. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Ooh, now, instead of looking at which one's the greatest, now we're gonna look at which one is greater specifically, okay? And instead of um, these uh, really cute images, we're just gonna have these dots, but it's the same exact thing. If we were to say, or if we were to um, compare which one is greater, again, we would just count them. Um, and we already know this is 14 and this is 17, okay? And since 17 is higher in number or uh, farther away from zero, we know that uh, 17 is greater than 14. Okay, and it would be the same thing for 19 and 12. Uh, is there anyone who would like to try that? Yes, Gordon. Um, which one? Uh, B, this one. B? Mm -hmm. uh, nice job. Okay. Now, um, we're, we're gonna do kind of the same thing here. Just now, instead of images or pictures at all, we're just gonna have numbers, okay? So always remember, um, these numbers and pictures are basically the same thing. So if you, um, if you need a way to try and look at the problem so it's easier for you, you can just on your paper or scratch paper, you can just draw out like say 10 of turn 10 circles or 10 squares uh, if it helps you. But now uh, if we look at which number is the greatest, you can see that if we were to have, let's say um, 20 apples, 20 apples is more than 16 apples, it's more than 12 apples, it's more than eight apples. So 20 is going to be the greatest. And if we look at B, which one is the smallest? Well, we know if we have eight apples, that would be um, the least compared to 12, 16, and 20 apples. So eight is the smallest. And if we arrange the numbers in order, and it says begin with the smallest, that means we're going from zero to 20. 
okay? And we're getting bigger and bigger with each number. So since eight is the smallest, we know eight will go here. Now, uh, 20 is the largest, so we know it would go here. So now it's just 12 and 16. And we know that um, 12 is less than 16, because if you have well, 12 apples um, and 16 apples, 16 apples will have four more apples than 12. So we know 12 is less than 16. So the order will be like this. Now, we're gonna try some addition that goes more than 10. If we look at um, if we look at before and all the other cahoots, uh, for example, today's cahoot, we have um, one of the addition problems is five plus five, and if we realize that the answer is not more than ten. The answer is actually exactly ten. But now we're going to try and see with these new numbers that we've learned um, if we can go more than ten. Okay, so if we count. There's actually um, a strategy for this. So say we have um, th these are say if, say if we just have um, these balls over here, then one strategy is to make uh, or is, is to make a group of ten and then count the rest. So um, they have actually kind of already done this for us, but one, two, three, four, five, And I'll put 10 over there. Okay. Okay. So now that we've made a group of 10, it's just like usual. We'll just count the rest, which is um, three. So we know we have 10 balls and then three left. So that would give us 13 in total. Uh, so just like how nine and one uh, make 10, well, 10 and three make 13, okay? So when we have, when we know the answer is gonna be more than 10, we can always try and make 10 first, okay? So um, in this example, it's um, kind of the same thing. We have um, all of these rabbits or bunnies and we, we would make 10 first, okay? So this is the group of 10 right here. And then we would just count the rest, which is uh, one, two, three, and finally four. So we have 10 and four. So we know the answer is 14. Okay, who would like to try B? Yes, Gordon, go ahead. And nice job. You can see. Sorry. Oh, okay. So uh, we can see that after making a group of 10, um, we just have five flowers left. So it's adding um, uh, 10 flowers with five flowers. And you can see they have made, they have done something kind of cool. So we can see that seven, um, a number pair for seven is five and two, right? Because we know five and two um, added, uh, added together will, will give you seven. So seven plus eight is kind of like five plus two plus eight, okay? And we know two plus eight is 10. So then that's basically how we get our 10 plus 15, or 10 plus five, sorry. So this is why these two are the same. And this is what, this is what uh, makes addition kind of cool. You can just break numbers into smaller pieces and put the pieces um, onto different numbers and get completely different numbers, but still the same answer, okay. And basically what I've done is 
just like what we always do with the pictures, we, we've just rearranged um, the number. So we, we took two flowers from um, these red flowers and put them with these yellow flowers. And that's how we get 10 plus five. Okay. Now, I need a few volunteers. Um, I guess I'll start. We would just fill in the blank. So nine plus one, well, is it's 10, because if we count from nine, we count one more time when we get 10. But nine plus eight, nine plus eight, if we count from nine, eight times, we're gonna get um, 17. So it goes uh, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, um, 15, 16, 17. So, okay. And so who would like to try B? And you're gonna need adult for this. Okay, Angela, go ahead and do B. Uh, Gordon, you can do C. And do we have a few more volunteers for D and E? You don't have to uh, write, write the answer. You can just say it. Looks like. Okay, nice job, Angela. And uh, Gordon, do you want to do three plus nine as well? Yep. Okay, nice job. Okay. Yeah. Um, is there anyone who would like to try D and E? Okay, then Angela, you can try uh try D and then I'll just do E. Ooh, okay. Uh, yeah, Ethan, uh, would you do six plus seven as well? And by the way, that is correct. Good job. And uh, yeah, Angela, that's, well, that's correct too. Yeah, so Ethan, what is six plus seven? If you want, you can try and make a 10 first. You can draw a picture where you have, uh, say, just six circles and seven circles. And then you can make a group of 10 and then count the rest, if that's helpful. Thirteen, perfect, okay. Okay, now uh, I think we're gonna try adding numbers that are more than 10, okay? So before we're, we're still adding numbers um, that are below 10, right? We have, the highest we have is nine. We never um, have numbers that are uh, greater than 10 being added. And now we do. So it's the same thing. We can still break it into tens. We know that 13, it shows here, we know that 13 is made out of 10 and three, so that's a number pair, okay? And so what we can do is we can add three and four and then um, do what we usually do and just add the 10. And so three and seven, or sorry, three and four is seven. And so 10 and seven, we know is 17. So 13 and four is 17. And another way that um, you can do it is really just by counting. Um, so if you start off with 13, then you have to count four more times. So then you would get 14, 15, 16, and 17. So if you wanna do it that way, that's fine too. Um, but adding with 10 instead of just counting with your fingers is gonna um, help you later because you, 
the numbers might not always be um, small enough for you to count. Because if the, number, if the numbers get too big, then, well, you can't use your fingers to count anymore. Okay. Um, as a demonstration, I'll go ahead and do uh, A, and then I'll need uh, someone else to do B. But, okay, so we know that 5 plus 4 is 9. So 15 plus 4 is a mysterious number. If we look at 15, we know that it is made out of 10 and 5, okay? So if we have, if we know that 5 plus 4 is 9, we know that 15 plus 4 is really 19. And this is because 15 is just 10 more than 5, right? Because 15 is made out of 10 and 5. So really all we're doing is we're adding 10 to the 9. And we know if we have 10 and 9, it's 19. So that's how we would get our answer. And if we have um, the opposite way, if we have uh, 5 plus 14, it is kind of the same thing. So we instead, this time we're going to be um, adding 10 to the 4. But again, it's not really changing the answer. We're just changing the numbers um, we are using. But again, we're still going to get 19. And this is because, well, it doesn't matter what you add the 10 to, because at the end, we're still adding a 10. So Again, we can just add uh, the 10 to the 9 and get 19. Okay, uh, who wants to try B? Yeah, Gordon, go ahead. Yeah, nice job. Okay. Uh, so it's kind of like the same thing. We have uh, 2 plus 8 equals 10. And so if it's 12 plus 8, again, we're just adding 10 to the previous 10. And um, yeah, the answer is uh, 20. Okay. So now we're gonna move on to subtraction, okay? So subtraction, it is still kind of the same thing. You can actually still use uh, the uh, 10 strategy. So um, you can see that they split 10 and six uh, from 16, because we know, well, 10 and six is a, a number pair for 16. And so, one strategy, one strategy is to find the number pair with 10 in it. And so in this case, it's 10 and 6. And then we would only use the 6 to subtract for um, 4. So we know that 6 minus 4 is 2. So the answer is just 10 and 2, which is 12. Okay, so you're using, you're still using the 10 strategy. It's just subtraction and addition. It's kind of the opposite. And again, for now, you can use the counting uh, strategy with your fingers. Uh, you would just go um, 15, 14, 13, 12. Okay. Now, um, we have eight minus three equals five. And so it's kind of like the, uh, the addition problems over here. We're adding a 10. And if we know, or if we talk about subtraction, we know that if we make this number greater, this number will become greater. If we make this number greater, this number will become less, okay? And um, if you guys don't understand that now, that is perfectly fine. Um, just know that that is um, that exists. So that might help you. Okay, so if we're adding a 10 here, 
then we can do the 10 strategy. So the number pair with 10 in it would be 10 and eight. And so we can just use the eight um, to subtract with the three. And we know uh, eight minus three is five. So the answer would just be 10 and five together, which is 15. And then, and you guys might realize that this is just adding a 10 to the five. And so it'd be the same thing here. Um, if we have seven minus five equals two, we add 10 here. Uh, Sophia, do you wanna answer this or? Okay, go ahead. Seven minus five. Eight. Which one are we doing? Uh, this one over here. Seventeen minus five. Seventeen minus five equals two. Sorry. Equals two. Ooh, it's close. Okay, so we can see that um, just like this problem, if we add 10, we can make a number pair with 10 in it. So um, a number pair with 10 in it that makes 17 is 10 and seven. And so we can just take this part and subtract it with the five. So seven minus five is two. So really um, this problem is 10 plus two, which is 12. But um, I think you, had kind of the right idea. Okay. Uh, Gordon, did you want to try this? Yep. The bottom one? Uh, yeah, 12 minus four. And this one is a bit tricky because it's, Oh, okay, never mind. Good job. That's so easy. Okay, so now we're kind of, we're kind of, we kind of need to switch our strategy because um, if we have some, if we have problems like these, we, we, if we follow our normal strategy, um, first we're gonna find number pair with 10 in it, which is 10 and two. But then if we look at what we're subtracting with, we realize that, well, we can't use this number. We can't use a number other than 10 because, well, it's not enough. You can't really do two minus four. If you, for example, if you have two apples and then someone takes away four, that wouldn't make sense because you can't take away what's not there. So, well, we're gonna have to switch our strategy, which is taking away from the 10 itself. So then um, that would become much easier. And so we would just do 10 minus four, which is six. And then we would add that back um, with the other number, which is two. So then the answer is eight. Okay, um, for this, we have 10 minus six equals four. And so for 11, we can do the number pair, which is 10 and 11. And we know that 10 minus six equals four, right? And we know that we can't subtract one with six. So we would just do 10 minus six, which um, we already know the answer to, which is four. So the answer would just be four plus one, which is five. For this, it'd be the same thing. The number pair is 10 and two. And so 10 minus six is four. So we're doing uh, four plus two, which is six. For this, um, the number pair is 10 and five. We know, 10, we know that five um, can't be subtracted by six. So we do 10 minus six, which is four. So we're doing four plus five, which is nine. Okay, uh, does someone like to try B?
and yeah, Gordon. B. Time. Okay. Uh, great job. It's just made a tiny mistake for 11 minus 7. Oops. I'm going to sink. Four. Yeah, four. Okay, great job. So, um, I guess I'll just go through this in some detail again. If we have 11, we can split this into 10 and one. We know that one cannot be subtracted by seven, so we do 10 minus seven, which is three. Um, we know that because it says right here. So we do three plus one and we get four. For 12, we get uh, 10 and two. Do the same thing, we get three. And so we do uh, two plus three, which is five. For this, um, we have 10 and five. Five can't um, be subtracted by seven, so we do 10 minus seven, which is three. So we do three plus five, which is eight. Okay. So, uh, yeah, this was the other strategy that I was talking about, which is counting. So if we just do um, eight and eight plus three, we can just count three times starting from eight, and we would get to 11. Um, well, this strategy is simple and it's easier compared to just having um, to find number of pairs with 10 and all that. Again, this doesn't always work because if the numbers get too big, then you can't really keep track. And you guys will see, um, I think in the future, why that is. Um, okay, so can I have some volunteers that would do, um, let me see. Okay, Angela, go ahead and do A and B, and then um, Gordon, uh, do C and D. C and D? C and D, yeah. Okay. Done. Uh, Gordon, what is, yeah, what does D say? D. Okay, nice job. Okay, uh, and then, okay, that's correct. Good job, you guys, and thank you, Ethan. Oh, okay. Okay. So if we do subtraction, um, well, oh, sorry. If we do subtraction, it would be the exact same thing um, with counting. Uh, we would just, instead of going forwards, we go backwards. So we would just count backwards. Um, so if we have 11 and we're subtracting two, we would count back two times. So we would do 11, 10, and then nine. So nine would be our answer. Can we uh, can we get two more volunteers for A, B, and C, D again? Okay, Gordon, how about you do A, B this time? A, B? Yes, A and B. A and B. And does someone want to try C and D for me? You don't have to annotate. You can type in chat. You can um, verbally tell me. Seven. Seven. 
Nope. There we go. Nice job. Mm. Ooh, it's close. Nine. Nine, exactly, okay. Ooh, done. Okay, and so for 14 minus one, uh, if we're using the counting strategy, we can count from 14 backwards one, one time, and we were, uh, not we were, uh, we will get 13. And for 18 minus two, you do the same thing, um, count backwards two times, and we are gonna get 17 and then 16. So 16 will be our answer. Okay, now um, for the remaining time we have left, um, we can try and start some of these exercises. So, matching. Okay, so uh, I'm assuming one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so you can see for this one, we have 10 cookies, 10 cookies, and then we have two more cookies on a plate. So it's kind of like the 10 strategy. We have a group of 10 and then two. So we know that the answer is 12. That is why um, there's a line here. Okay, um, for this one, the answer is 16 because we know there's 10 here, there's 10 here, and then six more. So the answer is 16. For this one, we have 10 and then one more. So we know the answer is 11. And uh, for these three, we know that we have, uh, I believe this is 10 here, and then seven more. So the answer is 17. We have um, 10 more and then two or four more. So 10 and four is 14. Then finally, uh, we have ooh, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 10, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, or wait, did I miscount? Or yeah, five, sorry. And then we have five more. Lemons or leaves, probably lemons. Um, the answer will be 15. Okay. Um, I guess, okay. Uh, can I have some volunteers? And we, we can quickly finish up these problems and then I'll let you guys go. Okay, so Angela, can you do the first two? And then uh, Elise, can you do uh, these two? the two Christmas related ones. You can type the answer in chat or uh, use annotation. And we're just writing um, how many there are. Okay, that is correct. Um, Elise, great job. And um, there's another one for the Christmas tree stars. Oh, Angela, are you doing the first two or? And that's correct, at least. Great job. Okay. Yeah, uh, I'll just do I'll just do the first two then. So if uh, we know there's a group of 10, oh, never mind. 
Okay, 17, that is correct. And 13, perfect. Okay, great job. Um, I guess that will be it for now. Um, we have a few more exercises. I might post that as homework. Um, but other than that, thank you guys for coming and um, I'll see you guys next week. Thank you.